This guitar has a lot of story to it. It is a 1959 Les Paul Standard that's been very heavily restored in finish. It's been refinished, it's been refretted, but almost all of the hardware is original, including the electronics. This guitar with this beautiful, beautiful maple top, two pieces that do not, do, do not match, both highly figured. This guitar originally left the Gibson factory painted black. There was a very, very slight flaw in the hole where they cut the bridge pickup out. There's a patch right here. Gibson, when they saw the flaw, perhaps a piece of wood chipped off when the machine cut the hole, they just put a piece of wood in there, glued a piece of wood in there, painted it black, and sold it. So when I got it, it was already refinished. I said that I could not cover this beautiful wood with black. If they had not chipped it, they would have painted it sunburst like the rest. The colors are very much my impression of the original guitars as they left the factory, a very deep, dark cherry red from 59, which all, always fades a little bit. There's almost none that have not faded at all. This one is, will not fade or will fade very little, so it will stay this way. Uh, back is a very dark cherry red. And I did not have a serial number for this guitar. There was none on it. It was refinished when I got it. So I had the number 1959. No prefix, nothing to make it look like a true 50s number except in style. Didn't want it to fool anybody into thinking it was something that it wasn't. Still one of the best playing and best sounding Les Pauls I own, and I do play this sometimes. So come out and hear it. After spending several days with Tom Whitrock in Springfield, Missouri, we got really hungry for more stories about the Bursts. When we met the Burst Brothers about half a year later in Charlotte, North Carolina, they supplied us with two more wonderful Burst stories. Here they are. I bought um, a 59. It was a 59, early 59 Les Paul from um, a woman and her husband, Lois and Jim, in a they were out of Milwaukee, and I met them in Chicago in one of our local stores there. And um, very nice couple. You know, they, they, they had bought the guitar new in 1959. They both played in a country western band at the time. And if I'm right, I think the guitar, if 1959 was a wedding present from the husband to her. And she was the guitar player, he was the bass player in the band. And she kept that guitar from 1959 until I bought it from her in probably 97 or 98. Played the guitar. Um, kept it, it in really good kept condition. Kept it in great condition. I think about 1980, they kind of realized the value of the guitar had increased so much that she kind of put it away and she got a brand new telly at the time and I think played that. Um, she had to have an operation, um, had, to, had to make their house into wheelchair accessible and stuff like that. So it came time to sell the guitar and we worked out a price on it. And I came and met her and um, it, it, was, it was an emotional time for her, very emotional. I actually have footage of her, you know, strumming it for the last time and, you know, the, the tears were welling up. And I mean, this was a member of the family. I mean, these guitars after time, they just become a child, they become part of the family. So it was, it was very tough for her to, to let that go. But it uh, worked out, she actually, it went to a, a, a good customer friend, friend of ours, of ours and, and they ended up communicating and being friends. So and she I think felt they, good about right, where the guitar went. Right, she felt good up. where the guitar went to. They still communicate and, you know, she checks on her baby and, and, and all. So, and, so th that's a story in the sense that it, it, it's great to be able to, to to purchase something from somebody like that and, and, and to be able to, to help them out, you know. Well, my, my interesting story on a burst was maybe only five or six years ago. Uh, we got a call from our Sacramento store where there is a, the daughter of uh, the original owner that had a 58 burst wanted to sell it. So I flew in to Sacramento 
and I met uh, the daughter and her husband, and um, her dad was a minister, and her mom actually owned the guitar. I guess her mom, it was a gift or purchased a guitar in 58. The guitar was interesting to me because it was it was very primitive. It was the earliest, the earliest burst I've ever seen. Yeah, Probably early. one of the first batch made, and it, it was a little more unrefined than some. It had the biggest neck I've ever seen on a burst, and it was a great guitar. So I met, I met the people, they were very nice, and uh, she said, look, you know, we've done our homework, we've done the research, and you're gonna have to pay us what, what we've determined the guitar is worth. And I said, well, okay, what do you think it's worth? And she gave me a figure, which was almost exactly half of what I gave her. I said, <laughs> I said the, well, that's great that you think your guitar is worth that, but actually it's worth twice as much, and I'm gonna sell it for even a little more than that. So we made a deal where we actually gave them almost twice what they were looking the for. And, um, and then we sold it to a, a, a good friend person that we deal with that collects purse. And he was extremely happy with the guitar. And the most gratifying thing for the, from the whole purchase and the whole experience to me was the, um, the husband and wife that owned the guitar, actually the woman owned the guitar, they were retiring. The husband was retiring from the ministry after, after years of service with, with no reward, um, monetarily that is, and, um, and they were able to buy a house to retire and with the money that, that, they, that we gave them to purchase a guitar. And they were so grateful that this sweet lady called me every day for almost two weeks thanking me in tears and was so so happy that um, not only that we bought it, but that we were honest with them and told them, you know, that we gave them more than they were expecting. And, and I haven't heard from them now in a few years, but they were able to buy a house. They called me once they closed on the house and bought the house. And it was just the best story. Um, I just felt really good about being in the position to be able to give, to give them, to fulfill their dream and make their retirement. And, and luckily she had the guitar and she wanted the check made out to her because this was really the only thing she contributed in their, in their family was being able to own this guitar and to sell it and then buy the house. So uh, that was just a warm and fuzzy feeling I got and uh, it was good all the way down the line to the person that ended up with the guitar. In the last part of our little feature, the story being told is not necessarily a burst story, but the story is as interesting as it is entertaining. It is being told by Mr. Les Paul himself in person. It's his side of the story why his name, Les Paul, got taken off the SG in 1963. Because of the divorce, uh, Gibson and myself decided that until everything got settled in the divorce proceedings that I would allow them to put out one guitar and say so they asked what guitar that I suggested that they put out and I said the one that I like the least <laughs> I'll give you the, the SG you can have that one and you can put that one out, but that's all you can put out until the divorce is settled and then we will go back and make a new contract and start Les Paul guitars all over again. <laughs> 